You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's The Walking Dead After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's The Walking Dead After Show. The Suicide King. Guys, I'm so excited because we're back from a deadly hiatus. Yes. I almost turned into a zombie from how long it was, <laughs> I have to say. But guys, Bing is for doing, and we are doing the Walking Dead after show. And guys, joining me today, tonight, across the table, we've got Kristen Carroll. Hey, guys. Daryl Kristen. Hey, we're happy to be back. And a new face next to me, coming in zombie mode tonight, Nando Velasquez. Yes, I'm coming in, whoa, I'm coming in zombie mode. I, I had a little bit of a screaming accident. I was screaming, and it, well, it was an accident. He, so. he was learning <laughs> leadership skills, and we learned as leaders, apparently you scream a lot. The, the louder you scream, the better a leader you are, apparently. That's so. why I talk so loudly all the time. I think we learned that from Rick today, too. I think exactly. we did. Exactly. And guys, I am Dave Klein, and we have a very, very special guest with us tonight. You might Woo know him. You follow me? We've got Lou Temple. Hey. Woo! Hey. Hello, Hi, Lou. Hello. <laughs> yes. Woo. Yeah, man. Yeah. Y'all following me. That's fantastic. Welcome. Welcome to the After Buzz, Walking Dead. How great is it to be back? It is amazing. Awesome. I'm excited. It's amazing for us as an audience. How is it for you guys to get your show out? It's like Christmas morning again. <laughs> <laughs> February. It's the Super Bowl again. So we're so excited to be back, and I feel like um, all the traction comes back for the momentum of the show, the fans. Uh, you know, I don't call them the fans anymore because um, they're part of the team. It's like the... Uh, they're the uh, walkers. Wait, the, that's they're, not a good the, thing. they're the fourth wall cast <laughs> members. I mean, really, they, they, uh, they are part of the gig. They're the, they're the 12th man on the football field. They are, they're the guy <laughs> off the bench. They inform the show as much as the show informs them. For so. sure. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, we're back. All right. <laughs> well, we are excited to be back. And I want to talk about the start of the episode and get right into it because... S the last episode, the season kind of ended on a cliffhanger, or the, mm -hmm. before the hiatus, with Daryl and Merle about to fight off against each other, mm -hmm. and we start right back where we were. They're in the arena. They're pitted against each other, and Andrea is not happy at all. What did you guys think about this scene? I really like the opening that they had the governor. They did a close-up of, of his face, and you're just, you know that this is the change for him. Mm -hmm. He is no more what little nice guy we saw. It's gone. Mm-hmm. I want to know one of my favorite things about this scene, which was something I noticed that as the governor was there, a little blood started trickling down his yeah. eyes. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. that little detail. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I didn't know if it was a cut or if it was actually the blood, but then, I, of course, we re it was revealed that it was the blood. So it was pretty intense. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed that. So as they start fighting each other, Merle's put at this difficult decision. He kind of talks to the crowd like he's on the side of Woodbury mm -hmm. and then as he shoves Daryl over kind of lets Daryl know like hey I'm in this with you yeah. let's get mm -hmm. the hell out of here well he does but come on he puts in a couple of cheap shots I mean it's still a little sibling <laughs> rivalry maybe or something well and they had to play it off so you know yeah I mean. you gotta have that familial uh, you know punishment but it, it pays off for, for Merle doesn't it I mean mm -hmm. all along he's been uh, you know, searching f for Daryl, and and finally they find each other in the throes of survival and ultimately escape. So mm -hmm. I say yay for Merle. I do too, and oh. I I love the part that it was the governor. We see how evil he actually is becoming, and just to even peg the two brothers against each other. I mean, that just showed his dark force all the way. And we really see Andrea doubting him for the first real time. Like yeah. she's now actually doubting him, and she did before when she first saw the fights. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time that she kind of just gives him a look like, "What is this?" Well, I love the fact that she was calling out to him by his name. Like, yes. you know, Philip, don't do this. Philip, that. Philip. Mm -hmm. The other people are probably like, "Who's Philip?" 
standing there. That's what I was thinking. I'd be confused if I was one of the one more people. thing on this. Do we dodge a bullet? I mean, at the end, if we had to pick and choose between Daryl and Merle, I mean, do would, you know? I think what, that's what, a what, great point. What did the fans say about that? What are the fans tweeting or calling I, I in think to you, say? You can't kill Daryl. Yeah. Well, you can't I mean, kill Daryl. <laughs> Daryl's a fan I mean, favorite. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a big fan favorite. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. Daryl is the. Uh, Mer- Merle has no heart in this in this matter. I would say Michael Ruck, uh, Rooker would definitely win a fight against Norman Reedus, but you know you got to give it to Daryl. I mean, uh, we've got to about characters. I I I'm I'm all ears, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm. I'm Curious that he might, but skeptical that he would. Let's put it. (laughs) (laughs) We kind of see Merle as this racist asshole, so I don't think he got a lot of sympathy from people. And we've got all hail Caesar on the chat saying Team Daryl Hart. So Uh, there we go. We got got confirmation from the chat. (laughs) Hey, Dave, I want to throw something out there. Yes. Um, When they're fighting and Merle says, just go with it, go with my flow, what if – well, he didn't know that Rick and the party were coming back to get Daryl. Do That's you, right. Do you honestly think that Merle could have said that as a ploy to let his guard down so he could actually he'd take out Daryl? Do you think Merle has the balls to take out Daryl to keep his spot where he is? No. No. There no. was no way. I mean, even even Daryl said, "You really think the governor's going to keep you alive if you win?" Right. So I, I I think it was a, a flight or, or fight type of response that he did to to try and break out with. So his he would have found some way to get out of there then. Probably. Yeah, yeah okay. and I actually d- did believe Merle that for at that moment that he really was going to and wanted to just stick with Daryl, and that's all he kind of been looking for the whole time. He I think Merle's him. right where he wants to be. I mean, I think we're on his arc right now. He's he's with Daryl. That's all yeah. he's ever wanted. Yeah. clearly. And a bigger question: If Maggie hadn't saved the day, basically, do you think that they would have gotten out of there? Uh, that's. Yeah, and I don't know. Did did they have guns there? I don't. I didn't notice anyone with guns actually. Oh, the yeah, they yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, they, they did. did. Yeah. The okay. governor had a gun. Well, the governor did. Sure. The one, the one who rescued. I think it was Rodriguez. Well, yeah, so right, the governor the did the awesome like neck upper back kill. Or no, he yeah. just kind of looked back and did the kill. Yeah, it was would have been a tough escape. Yeah, but, but yeah. Mer- I think Dixon boys. I think yeah. they would have been able to pull it off, or at least have gotten something again if one of them gets their hands on a weapon and merle already has one on one of his hands <laughs> the, the knife was taken away but if as you saw as we saw later he was beating a zombie with just his can i say stump is that yes wrong? i think so you know it's his metal depends stump. on what you what mean do you call that? i think we all need one of those <laughs> yeah. you know, arc, one you gotta say arc. 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 the arc but that that's right as you said maggie does come and save the day and then rick and the whole crew and they they make their escape and they get out and they come along to um first merle wants to come along and rick doesn't trust them at all and merle's not ready doesn't want to deal with it immediately but they do make their escape as zombies enter woodbury we see the zombies get in and they come to glenn and michonne waiting and they are not too happy to see Merle for some no. strange reason. I, I can't Gee, go figure. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's always fun to bring a fly in the ointment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, one of the, a lot of things are happening there. But one of the things that was uh, very clear to me was Glenn's presence mm. and yeah. and mm. and the voice that he has has he, taken on now. Yeah. He had his gun up to Daryl. He had his gun up in front of Daryl. <laughs> Daryl told him to put it down. <laughs> Yeah, so. we, we've actually, Lou, had an argument with this group about Glenn in the past episodes because I have to admit that I didn't, I, like I didn't love Glenn's character <laughs> initially, I Glenn. but I really love the transition of where he's going right now, and he's, he's 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 a badass dude now. That's good going, work. Daryl just likes when people curve stomp anybody. Yeah. or Daryl. I mean, yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's going to a very dark place right he's now. He's going to a very dark place. Yeah. He's gonna most he's gonna stay. Are. Yeah, everybody seems to be uh, taking that ride. Everyone bought it ticket to darksville but, uh, <laughs> a one-way uh, ticket <laughs> but he certainly has rick's ear when he says no i mean uh, mm-hmm. there wasn't anyone that said let's go let's go it was absolutely no and you know your way or the highway and daryl's very convicted obviously which yeah. speaks a lot to his guy right you know, so. that's true and yeah. I, I like um when the group does kind of come together when everyone finds out that michonne knew andrea merle's kind of explaining it like Andrea and Michonne are lesbian lovers. That's that's a, yeah, of yeah. course, that's and his didn't explanation. Didn't he lick his lips at some point? Yes, he did. Yeah. He did, his little, he did a little tongue action. He did a little tongue action. action. Yeah, he did. Of course, I think nobody he believes in that. 
No, no, oh, right. that's, no. That's, right. that's uh, But Merle then, knows how to push buttons, and he knew exactly yes, the buttons to push to did. get to Michonne. I loved it. Her and Blondie spent all summer cuddling up together. And yeah. I, was, mm. <laughs> I think he won some of that action. That's what that was. What I love about it could be. <laughs> what I love about that oh, scene yeah. too is that by the end, even Daryl was turning on him a little bit. He was like, "Shut the hell up!" Yeah. And then of course, uh, Rick conks him out for for really the second time in the series because he conked him out in the first one. I'd like to see a running gag where, where Merle keeps getting the upper hand and Rick just conks him at the end. Or I like how you said upper hand. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's pun the intended. hand, pun, pun intended. Pun intended. And, uh, nice going. You don't like to wave at Merle because that you're showing off. <laughs> <laughs> but so they end up having this big debate over if they should bring Michonne and if they should bring Merle back. So yeah. it's about both of them. And Daryl wants to stick with Merle regardless of how much Rick kind of points out that their family he will not leave right and Maggie and Glenn stick up for Michonne because she's the reason that they mm -hmm. were saved yeah. so we kind of get this big dispute where Rick just doesn't want anybody yeah. pretty much yeah. yeah no one knew he's got more on his plate and he can deal with the, yeah. he's got a new somebody um, in the form of a little child a baby mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, these new these new elements I think are it's it's easier to say no, right? You know, these are two big decisions he has to make in, in in the span of two minutes. You know, whether or not to bring Merle along with 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 the, you know, camp divided, or, or the people there divided, and then to keep Michonne, who he obviously doesn't trust. So well, one thing about Merle marks. that's interesting. Sorry, uh, Nando, you bring up a great point because uh, uh, we know what's on the label with Merle. Mm -hmm. We're still really not sure with Michonne, right? Mm -hmm. we, and that's true. We don't, we don't know. I mean, is anyone we feel pretty good she can handle herself? Yeah. I think yeah. fans of the comic book are probably rooting for her, obviously, to say. But, okay. but it's yeah. it's a good swerve if, I mean, they don't trust her, and it's it would be really impressive if she does something even more distrustful that even the audience starts to wonder. I think that's yeah. a good point, because we're kind of thinking from our perspective as having seen her with Andrea and saving right. Andrea constantly, yeah. but yeah. the group doesn't know that about her. Mm. As far as they know, she's just really quiet. But I think the fact that she led them to Woodbury to save their friends. That's they got to have some sort of trust. Yeah, yeah, and I was going to say that because she, she hasn't necessarily done anything where they shouldn't trust her either. So, you know, I, and she did lead them, you know, to, to Woodbury. So it's, I would say that she's an asset. I would start to think of her as an asset on the team, you know, personally. The other right. thing is she did leave them at Woodbury briefly right at the end yeah. there when she went to go attack the governor. If they only knew what she did, they should right. have really, you know, That's true. Well, uh, her. yeah, you say that, but, you know, you stick your finger in a beehive and the <laughs> bees are going to chase you. So guess what? I mean, would the governor have just left well enough alone if Penny's still around? Well, or? I think the other thing about, about Rick, at least at this point, and, and it comes more obvious toward the end of, the of this episode, mm -hmm. too, is that he doesn't want to let anyone else in. He's, he's dealing with a lot of deaths already. He's got, he's got, a, he's got a heavy heart already. So... To trust somebody like that, you know, it's just it's just another person he has to worry about at the end, or another, another or even another another variable that could hurt somebody else in the group. It's another right. decision he has to make that could cost him. Yeah. I think that's a good point, and I, I want to bring it back to uh, Daryl because Daryl decides to go with Merle. At the mm. end of the day, that's what he decides is to stick with Merle and stick with his family. Mm -hmm. That's what his is most important to him, and his code, as we'll find out, um, as Carol says later on. But I love the look that Merle gives when Daryl chooses him. He gives the happiest, yeah. like, satisfied <laughs> smile. It's just, like, such an evil, smirky, happy face. Oh, I was okay. kind of surprised that he went with Merle. I mean, I thought that they would – I thought that there was going to be some type of in negotiation where they weren't going to let Daryl leave. He's too much of an asset to the team. I was really surprised that they actually let was him Was anyone go. disappointed? I all of our delight with Daryl and his evolution, are we all of a sudden like, man, you're – just a redneck with a beer can. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I was. I mean, I didn't. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't want to see him go. I mean, I get it. It's your brother, but also your brother's kind of done some wrong things. So yeah. it's like you you formed this this partnership and and trust with this group, and now you're just gonna leave like that. Like well, even you know, more. I even so. say bye to even Carol. More, yeah, even more so. I mean, I mean, you're it's you and your brother now against. The zombie the horde, who knows right. what else. You're leaving yeah. security and comfort. You, he's an even bargaining, like, with Merle. Like, shut the hell up. And right. just, I mean, he did that at one point, but he's like, can you just do me a favor? Can you help me? You know, it, it would behoove you to at least act normal enough or nice enough to be back in the group so we right. can all be safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. it is interesting, though, to see Daryl's, and kind of think about Daryl's inner demons, because we saw in season two when he has, when he's kind of tripping out because mm -hmm. he's been injured so badly and he's seeing Merle, and mm -hmm. Merle's, 
treating him like crap and as kind of carol explains it's that abusive boyfriend that you yeah. just can't leave but something about him attracts you to him mm-hmm. and i guess daryl's kind of going through an abusive boyfriend so relationship daryl's the abusive rihanna Can I- oh. Yo. Oh. and on grammy night too yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. oh man Way to bring that to relevancy wow. <laughs> very interesting Same though you bring that up dave is how and then how does it inform uh rick on on family and mm. and uh, um, Daryl makes a choice and what does Rick where does he take that it's and, and I think what you point out there that is the big thing is that I think to Daryl it's the family aspect that's so important mm-hmm. to him and while mm-hmm. as Rick points out this is your family now I think it's that blood brotherhood that he has with Merle it's yeah. his family it is his true family and that's what at the end of the day it's like Glenn wants Maggie because that is his family and that's what mm-hmm. he cares about the most and Rick cares the most about Carl and his family. So everybody's really just going with their own blood family. Well, yeah. and I also thought, and I'm not sure if you guys thought the same thing, the reason he went with him is he still has this huge guilt for leaving him behind before. And mm-hmm. he even said, I left him behind once. I'm not going to do it again. Yeah. So maybe it was less about Merle, but the fact that he didn't do what he thought was the right thing the first time. So even though his brother's not that great of a guy, he's still going with him because he felt like he shouldn't have done that once. And now he's trying to make up for it for his own personal sake. So well, at the end of the I day, got. did Daryl do the right thing? Who would have done what Daryl did? <laughs> That's a tough one. Nice That's a really tough one to answer. I mean, I probably would go with my family, uh, a family member, but it would be a tough one. I mean, it, it's just uh, he's formed such a bond with him. So uh, that's what the interesting part of the show is, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, the, we're, what we're doing is we're erasing lines of, of morality, of, of pattern behavior, and – the old adage, you can't pick your family. Yeah. Maybe here in, a, in this world you can. I feel but like I you can, though. I mean, I have people in, that I would consider family that are closer than my blood. Yeah, you that's know, true. I, It all depends on how you grow up and, and how that shapes you. So for me, as if I were Daryl, probably end up with the prison group because blood is always supposed to have your back, and Merle hasn't always had Daryl's back either. So Yeah. And, and these other people have. And well, I think well, we don't know that, though. We don't know that Merle's never always had Daryl specifically back. He just was a total asshole to everybody else. We just assume that he doesn't because he's always right. kind of mean to everybody. Yeah. Well, do you think that the group should have let Merle come back and just put him in a prison? That's a good point. You know? Daryl wouldn't allow that, though, because Daryl – you know, Daryl would not just put him and lock him up on the side. Merle wouldn't allow that. Merle would make yeah. a make such a holler and hooting that <laughs> seriously. It's a big enough prison. You just throw him in one of the cells and like D block. And Merle yeah. is vindictive. I mean, you yeah. saw that from the first season. I yeah. mean, when they when they when they kept him uh, chained up. You know, mm-hmm. it was the the thing was if they let him go, what would he have done? Who would he have stabbed or killed or whatever? What I like about the show, though, this season, especially in the writing, is that. It's a uh, it's smart writing in that usually like when you're gonna split a group up group up, it's it's stupid to be like I think we should split up at this point. This is one of those moments where they give a nice big behind story. They give something that compels Daryl to get away from the group. So now he, we have two locations. We have uh, Woodbury and we have the prison, and they're going after each other. But then we have these two trump cards that are outside of this. Yeah, they're outside of this, and they can come in at any time because they're not going to go that far on foot. Yeah. They're going to still be in this area, and that's what I find is really cool. And I love—I actually just made myself sound smart with Trump card because I love that the episode's <laughs> entitled <laughs> "Suicide King," Whoa. which is like the King of Hearts. Ooh, with nah. the nice. Okay. And one other thing about that split up—I mean, no one, no one here will argue that Daryl is pretty much the number two biggest butt kicker on on the team on oh, on, sure. on it from the prisoners yeah. so for him to leave especially at a time when they just attacked woodbury and they're expecting woodbury to attack back that's a big hole and then michonne for those who aren't familiar with the comic book is an incredibly strong um mm-hmm. person as well so here's rick really pretty much putting the the two strongest people that he has that could help him well if you look at run. if you look at rick like the president you'd say herschel is his like secretary and then we'd have we'd have Daryl as a secretary of defense, the yeah. guy who controls like how we're going to do things. So it's kind of like they got rid of part of Rick's like strategic planning for any of this, this like war that military. is going to go down. Yeah. yeah. And I think Beth even acknowledged that when she was talking to Carol, when she had the baby, she yeah. said something about, you know, we're um, weak without, we're weak him. without him. We're, 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 we cannot move forward without Daryl. So, I mean, they, they make an acknowledge. Right. So, well. so Daryl, definitely an important point, but let's move on to the yeah. scene with, um, 
Glenn, where right after this, Daryl does end up leaving with Merle. And we've got the zombie in the car that Glenn just straight up curb stomps, yeah. which is awesome. And Glenn is just pissed about the fact that they didn't kill the governor. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, do you guys think that there, that really that was something they should have focused on? Do you agree with Glenn? Because, I mean, it seemed like there's just so much chaos. They were just focused on saving their friend. Well, what's interesting, what's interesting is that Glenn was hurt more from Merle. Maggie was the one that was hurt from the governor. Right? Yeah. I mean, his, you see his physical scars, but yeah. he's more concerned about about what happened with uh, Maggie and the governor, and that's that's where his anger is coming from, mm -hmm. completely. Very personal for Glenn. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the, you know, uh, w there's one thing to escape and and survive as the group does, um, but Glenn's got you know, is it's been Maggie. It's, yeah. It's been violated, yeah. and he, uh, you know, he, he he's taking that very personally, yeah. and uh, and I think that's part of his coming. His, his phoenix is rising up, so maybe he is a force to reckon with now. The other thing about Glenn is, I mean, the way he stood up to Rick. I mean, yeah, if you can, if you remember a couple of episodes yeah. back when he was trying to talk to Rick, and Rick was the one tossing him around, yeah. and now he stood up like a hundred percent to Rick, and, and even for a second it looked like Rick was a little, a little scared of him for a second there, and that that's something because Rick's already going through his own downward spiral, yeah. and here he is now like holding back. To Glenn. Yeah, but you definitely do find Glenn finding his voice from this oh, and yeah, sure. really raising up and becoming one that Daryl can actually enjoy. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, but Kristen, his balls have officially dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, All right, but let's let's talk about the Woodbury. I've showered now. with him and I can uh, I can't I can't, oh. I can't, I can't oh. verify that. You can't verify that. <laughs> can't verify that, Steven. Sorry. Just, uh, the the Walking Dead it. crew very close. Yeah. <laughs> we only have one shower. <laughs> Kristen probably wants to hear all about Daryl. <laughs> oh. He never showers. Oh. oh. Guy doesn't need any patchouli. <laughs> fresh as the earth. So somewhere they probably do maybe have working showers or some system is Woodbury, and they are panicking in Woodbury. <laughs> Good transition, Dave. I love the segue. Thank Good segue. Good segue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm proud of myself on that one. Um, so let, let's talk about Woodbury and that we've got everybody just freaking and flipping out because the zombies have come in. The governor's locked himself away and just they don't know what to do. You've got Martinez like tr th almost threatening to shoot someone for honking their horn. For yeah. being Although that was out. a stupid, stupid thing for that person to do because you could see just the zombies like just yeah. coming God. in. Yeah. yeah. And you've also, I mean, that's going to annoy anybody. Yeah. But Andrew's trying <laughs> to keep it together and get everybody together and just everybody is freaking out. Mm -hmm. And then we've got some zombies who come in and they're just start eating everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the greatest scene from the governor. <laughs> Doesn't even a say scene. a word. Doesn't even say a word. He just walks in. He was like a shadow. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, it's interesting because I would never have guessed that Andrea would be the voice of reason. You know what I mean? Like she came in as the voice of reason to the people, and yeah. who knew? You know, she's come such a long way as well. I she think, really has. I agree with that. I I kind of disliked her character in season one and season two, and I've slowly grown to like her more in this. She's a, qu a little questionable with her taste in men, but. <laughs> You know, for Shane and you know, the governor. <laughs> but besides that, I loved her in this. Her mm -hmm. whole speech to that crowd later on and even just, I mean, she had to take charge because the guy that she's seeing is, is having a few issues right now. Yeah. This is the Andrea, this is more the Andrea from the comic book yes, that people are fans so. of yeah. as opposed to the more whiny, like, why can't I have a gun type of yeah. Andrea yeah. from season two. Mm -hmm. Which just dro dro drove me crazy. Yeah. yeah. But here's the thing, though, and her questionable taste in men still makes me not like her because at this point, she finds out from the governor, he had basically admits to her that he'd been holding Glenn and Maggie as prisoners and yeah. didn't tell her, says, you're just a visitor here, why should I tell you? even though they were in this sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. And she still is like, don't drive me out, not now. Mm. And she's still not giving him what, like giving it to him, which yeah. he deserves to have. Like he just, I mean, he kind of, and makes it out like it's their fault that all these people died. It's mm -hmm. her friend's fault. When it should be pretty obvious to her at this point, if he was holding her friend's prisoner, mm -hmm. what happened? I mean, at least there should be something connecting there, I well, feel like. I, I feel like she's uh, she's still thinking about the – she's still taking the role of a leader and thinking about the whole Woodbury as a whole. And in order for Woodbury to, to function, in her opinion, is for the governor to at least be, be a leader himself. 
And so. that's it's so interesting. It, speaking of leaders, Nando, uh, <laughs> because he, you know, you are a leader. Oh, thank you. And uh, so I think that's r- really interesting. Now um, forecasting, where is Andrea going? Um, uh, all of a sudden, she's got a voice. When's yeah. the last time she had a voice? And people are listening, mm-hmm. and she has mm-hmm. something to say. And and she just turned a bad situation, horrible, into feel good and hugs. And how did she take that? Wow, ooh, that light felt bright and shiny. <laughs> ooh, I like the warmth of that. And where's that going? And, hmm, survival group, team leader. Mm. She wanted that. It seemed like she wanted that in season two when, like, Dale was holding a gun from her. Yeah. She wanted to have a, m- a bigger role. Mm-hmm. So she now she's being forced to step up between the inadequacy of a lot of the Woodbury residents who want to honk the horn to open a door or or just freak out because they can't have barbecues and picnics the way they used to <laughs> to to someone like the governor who's just checked out for a bit and and you know she's just trying to she's forced to be the role to to step up there again it's great writing right yeah. i mean it's this why the show's so great because now all of a sudden what's driving andrea well hmm. i think that what's driving her is actually the fact that she lost one thing that she cared about, and I think she's been trying to find something, a reason for her to survive, and she hadn't really found that. She likes Michonne, but that wasn't enough. But you could see in the beginning of this season that Woodbury really changed her. Now she's got this guy who she believed was this great guy earlier on. It's hard to let go of something like that in any relationship. Yeah. You try, if, you, if you're dating sure. somebody, if you find out some good stuff at the beginning and it's slowly turning bad, you want to convince yourself that it's still good. And so she's fighting for... Woodbury and she probably got to know some of these people a little bit and care about them and a community and life back to normal and I think that's what's driving her is to bring back something she loves you know again it is what Carol brought up and we'll talk about later which is that bad relationship that bo- bad boyfriend that she talks mm-hmm. about that you that's hard to let go of that you just can't get rid of how do you know again that point I mean unless they got short hair I mean you, don't, <laughs> you can't tell but uh <laughs> And then there's this little, did anyone pick up on, uh, as the governor was doing his list about those that had been lost in this, uh, this, this incident, and then there was kind of a little pregnant pause, maybe not pregnant, maybe we'll just do the test, but on Haley uh, to Andrea, and did mm-hmm. that mean anything? Well, yeah, because she had sat with Haley, and they, they knew each other, and she was young, and I think this hopeful girl that, that maybe she could have been better friends with later on down the line yeah it was interesting yeah Mm -hmm. mentioning that scene can i just say something real quick i wrote this down because i thought it was kind of funny remember back when merle was in the forest with those two other guys looking around yeah Mm -hmm. when they were looking for michonne when he when he listed off (laughs) names he listed carjulio and i was like we just heard carjulio's (laughs) name yet again (laughs) carjulio yeah (laughs) pronounced appropriately (laughs) but but as we were talking about with andrea her moment really was her kind of taking the podium there and bringing everyone together and i loved her talk about perseverance and as you guys said it really as Kristen was saying it's woodbury that's kind of become her her thing that she's attached to and as you guys were talking about that that is her thing that she's going to fight for and it's just really just she wants to rebuild the walls but mainly the community and i think that was kind of what stuck with me was that idea of the community and i love that the governor's just kind of watching through the blinds the whole time too (laughs) and i don't i was sitting there thinking like you know i understand that woodbury was under attack and people are freaking out because of that but i still want to stay there i mean they're they're still equipped to fight Mm -hmm. anyone else who comes in that's the best place to be versus going out with the zombies in the middle of the highway but that almost shows you that they've been living in there so long that they don't realize the dangers out there they've been so comfortable with what they've had and what the governor has given them that they just feel like oh you know what we're gonna you guys are crazy we're just gonna strike out on our own now and 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 that's why that's probably even why that guy was honking so much because he's like I can handle it. I got my car. I got. I'll just honk the zombies out of the way. Yeah. Knows, yeah. You know? These themes are so interesting. We're watching. Uh, we're certainly watching Rick um, struggle with his leadership mm-hmm. of the group. We're we're seeing uh, the governor all of a sudden. We're getting to know him, and he's starting to struggle with mm-hmm. his leadership a little bit with the uh, with the groups. And someone like Andrea now feeling a little leadership capacity. Maybe Glenn's feeling a little leadership capacity. And we got a, a clear thinking man who's just arrived in yeah. the form of. 
Tyrese, who we're all excited about. But um, mm -hmm. Dave, I'll let you uh, yeah, play thanks. through. So before we get to Tyrese, we do have to mention, guys, that we would love your support in any way possible, whether that be going on to iTunes, go on to YouTube, watch us live on AfterBuzzTV.com. If you go to iTunes or YouTube, please do rate us, comment, positive or negative. We just want to hear your feedback. We just want to know how we can make this show better for you guys if you listen. So we definitely want to hear from you guys. Where do I get one of those mugs? <laughs> you got them in the kitchen. So we got them in the kitchen. Cool. Make sure you get one before you leave. But you could also go on AfterBuzz TV. We have merchandise now, right? That's true. We do. We do now have merchandise <laughs> that you can buy. I, had to, I was taking a sip from this amazing mug where you can go to AfterBuzz TV and buy our merchandise from the store. That's Anything what I'll you guys have to want. do. The water, is, the water is not included if you buy the mug, by the way. So. Oh, Lou, you're so uh, smooth with that transition. Yeah, you got me. That was good. Can I build something on what Lou said? Yes. Um, I like how you were mentioning the, the situations that are so similar between what's going on. And we see the governor, as he loses his daughter, which was his – like ground, he's becoming unhinged, and then uh, Rick is losing his hinge from uh, Lori, of course. But as people, as he goes, as Rick goes crazy, I think the people who are his supports will s be there to stay for him. Mm -hmm. But as the governor goes crazy, the people who are his supports, they're all built on lies, and he already threw Merle under the bus. Like he throws his supports under the bus, so mm -hmm. it's kind of the collapse of a kingdom and the kingdom holding his king up. Mm -hmm. So I thought that's, that's interesting. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a great fairy tale. So let's talk about the prisoners in the group, the kind of the prisoner group, as they are in the prison. And we'll get to Tyrese after that. But we've got um, at this moment, after all the craziness has gone on, Carol and Carl are kind of hanging out together, and Carol's kind of having this retrospective of how quiet things are, and she misses the loud noises. When we have this sad homecoming, as a beautiful shiny Hyundai that must have <laughs> just been washed drives in. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, it looks nice like it just placement. got detailed. Um, amazing. They're Hyundai's good, do that. They're good apparently. cars. They're, they're fantastic. They, they just, I have Everyone a Hyundai. Buy one. I have a Hyundai that stays clean no matter what. It's amazing. A zombie apocalypse, I'm sure, would stay clean. But <laughs> um, kind of Rick comes in and has to explain to Carol that Daryl is up and left and has to explain to Carl, who's asking about Oscar, that he didn't make it. So yeah. all this sadness, sadness coming. And we're, we're going to get a little bit later, too. Axel having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of, like, when uh, uh, Rudolph comes back and Yukon Cornelius didn't make it because he went over with the Bumble, you know. It was a, it was a sad day. It was a happy kind of sad. <laughs> and uh, so, so this is uh, a happy kind of sad. This is a, I mean, <laughs> it's good to see some of you back. Um, clearly, uh, um, casualties. And yeah. uh, I think they – they kind of get swept under, particularly someone like Oscar. I, 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 I will uh, let you address that, but um, here we are, Carl and, and Carol, and we don't take enough time to reflect and how, how much, uh, felt like season two, we got a lot of reflection. Mm -hmm. Season three, we have no time for reflection, which I think everybody appreciates. <laughs> but um, well, I uh, think season two, there's just a little bit too much. Uh, now and again, it's good to, to hearken on the things. We forget we talk about this all the time on set that we all have memories mm -hmm. and someone like Carl these will be his memories yeah. mm -hmm. these will be his upbringing and little ass kicker what does she have <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean really yeah. uh, so um, w we talk about that it's, it's incredible th that we take for granted life and, and how uh, general it is, and yet um, in this new world, it, it's going to be completely different. And um, and so to to take a moment to reflect on on those things, and check in with with people like Carl, the, the youngsters, to say, are you you okay? Because their grounding will be completely different. Yeah, it's like yeah. Carl doesn't even have a chance to play at all. He can't. He really can't play at all. A good time might be popping a few zombies, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> playing, you know, hide and go seek with some walkers. Yeah, he doesn't even have friends. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, it's age. really Beth is the closest. Yeah, yeah. The closest to age. Yeah. Um, but I want to bring up something from the chat that someone brought up that I thought was an interesting point, which is Haley Reinhardt, that's um, at Bulls and Reinhardt on Twitter, brought up that I hope Carol doesn't die that could set up for Daryl to feel like it was his fault she died Ooh. after he left mm. because he's kind of felt like the protector as Carol brings up like he mm. was a protector of the group and that's kind of or I think Beth was bringing that up that he was sort of this big protector 
And if she were to die, would he feel at fault for that? So, Lou, what do you think about that? <laughs> what do I think? <laughs> uh, I feel like Carol is uh, is uh, very resilient, obviously. Um, I think she's she's very interesting. I wonder reverse. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna switch that up. Devil's advocate. Maybe Carol wasn't good for Daryl. Hmm. Maybe uh, maybe Carol was. Keeping Daryl in a place of um, uncertainty, and and uh, maybe he needs to go out and conquer, mm -hmm. and uh, he wasn't able to do that. And and um, I le let's not forget Carol's uh, history. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. it seems like Daryl. What's Darryl the deal? Let's see. What happened to Ed? He well, Ed got killed in the first season. Yeah, yeah. and then um, there and was... he was uh, an abusive boyfriend. Yeah, okay. and abusive then... Her husband. husband. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, she befriended um, some other dude, and he's not with... <laughs> No, he's not with the team. Uh, you know, I'm just saying. I don't, uh, watch out. Whoa, yeah. Carol. She could be the Black so Widow. <laughs> the Black Widow Black Carol. Black but Black. anyway, let's not let's forget about all that because uh, um, she's d uh, a Mother Earth, and yeah. she needs to take care of the, the children that I just talked about and have those talks with Carl and help. Uh, uh, Judith is her name, and um, and and get to know Axel. But so I, I feel like Carol's okay and Daryl's okay too. But um, Let, let's bring up that scene and talk about that scene too, where Beth is caring for the baby for Judith, and Carol's kind of commenting on how she's got a knack for it, and kind of this whole thing where they're talking about Daryl and why did he leave and what did he have to do. And I think with what you're talking about, maybe Carol wasn't good for Daryl, but I feel like Daryl was really good for Carol, yeah. especially when she brings up the whole point to Beth about if Ed came back, what would she do yeah. would she actually take ed back and she'd like to think she wouldn't and i think that's a, a nice scene to see i mean uh, granted this is a point where you don't want to lose anybody close to you it's just she kind of like it took something like this for her to mature and have gained self-respect for herself because yeah. i feel like that's a self-respect issue if you're gonna let someone treat you like that yeah mm -hmm. he gave her like an independence that she didn't have before well that's yeah. a big that's that's a, exactly right and that's a those are big uh, transitions to make and big arcs and for her to be able to, to overcome that and to come to where she is now and actually be um, serviceable to the group uh, for survival is is uh, is huge it's critical and um, in essence she'll be replacing Daryl which of course she can't do but but um, in, in a certain uh, support system and, and champion and have a, I think a voice of, of reason um, but I, I don't want to mean to say that that Carol's not good for Daryl. Of course, of course she is. I think she's <laughs> brought Daryl to a place of, of self awareness. Well, that's one, cool. One thing for sure. I mean, she she also has to step up now that Daryl's gone. Yeah. She has to be stronger for herself. And and notice those two scenes that she was in featured her with the youngest members, and and she yeah. did take on a very motherly role, and and uh, and said something very. You know, she was very very passionate and very. Um, just the way she was talking, she was very grounded yeah. in the way she talked to both of them. Yeah. So she is showing a maturity. She's hurt. You can obviously tell she's yeah. hurt by Daryl, but she's uh, she has the strength to move on, which I don't think she had back with Ed, right. mm. with the whole thing with Ed. So she has shown a lot of growth. And we do see, as you guys were mentioning, her compassionate side too, because we do get this scene later on with Axel, with your character, Lou, yes. where you are upset about Oscar and nobody seems to care except for Carol, who actually comes up to you when you're grieving over him. It's very, um, it, it, was, it was great. It was, it was very comforting because, uh, you know, my impetus in that scene was to be angry. Mm -hmm. And because um, uh, we haven't really seen, we, we're waiting for Axel to kind of show a color true or otherwise he, he did last week a little bit <laughs> a lot um a, a little <laughs> lascivious color people said but I, I think he's just been you know he's been pent up but clearly oscar was important to him and clearly oscar was somebody that he cared very dearly for mm -hmm. and 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 in some respects if you'll remember axel stepped when when rick asked who would go axel immediately did and looked at Oscar, mm -hmm. not challenging Oscar, but like, come on, dude, we're we're trying to ingratiate ourselves into the group, and and then Oscar got picked, 
as well he should to go and then Oscar gets killed yeah. mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot of survivor's guilt that Axel has mm -hmm. but more than anything anger and it's focused at Rick now when we did this scene I really wanted to turn the tide and we talked about it but in the context of what the uh, where we had to go for Rick to go where he had to go, it, it wasn't appropriate. But at some point, we had done a couple of scenes where I actually attacked Rick for letting Oscar get killed. Mm. Oh, so wow. as he's coming in, it was a physical thing that had to be broke up, where he was even further getting dismissed as the leader. That's great You let this guy die. Wow. You took to a that. man and let him die. I trusted you with him. You picked him to go die. Wow, so this is uh, this is great to hear. This yeah. Yeah. Oh, us, yeah. I, but, but that's why but, you watch it after Bus for scenes <laughs> like that. Well, the maybe that makes the DVD cut. cut. Yeah. But sure in the context of where then Rick has to go for the end of the show, this didn't work, and um, it was such a uh, you know I, 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 this might not be the right venue, but I'll I'll just share a story. This particular day that we filmed this scene, um, it was on a Monday. And the day before that, a dear friend of mine, a dear friend of all of ours, and, and we're so delighted with his work, Tony Scott mm. oh. passed yeah. the mm. day before. And then I had to, and, 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 and for those of you who know me or know my work, I've done three movies for Tony. And I had to go the next day and do this scene about a friend of mine who was lost. And it felt so relevant and so overwhelmingly powerful. It was very difficult. I almost didn't, what, I almost you know, said, guys, I can't really do this today. So, so I feel like a lot of that was personally Lou. I'm mm -hmm. angry. I'm angry that Tony did that. I'm angry that Oscar's mm -hmm. gone. I'm angry. So I think that, but, and I felt like that was right. I also feel like it may not have served uh, the show. And, and so I feel like what we have is appropriate. And um, uh, and the great thing about our cast and our, our crew and our producers is everybody gives everything a chance. So we'll give that a chance, and we've got that if that works. And, and then the editors are like, it's it's good, it works, but this is it seems like where it needs to be. So, so those were important things. And I think you're right, Dave, that I felt like Oscar's absence uh, got brushed away. So I, I feel the rest of my time with Rick, he went down fighting, isn't enough. Mm -hmm. right. Now, you know what? That's I, not much I, of an explanation. I got a bone to pick with you. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to get this worked out. Do you think, uh, and maybe you can't reveal this, but are we going to see this kind of pick up in future episodes? Uh, um, yes. I'm saying that we're, yeah. I, I have uh, some unresolved issues with with Mr. Rick, um, but well, you know we've got actually Haley Reinhardt in the chat thinks the scene shouldn't have been cut, and it's definitely, I mean we want to see those intentions from kind of the actors who don't get the spotlight as much too yeah. as an audience, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it must have been. I think it was probably more of a timing thing than anything well, else. Well, I, I think, think so too, it. and I, I, you know, again we all what we we, we talked about that today is uh, that uh, we're here to serve the story and we're here to serve the show, so. That and only that is important. And uh, so often we'll do some work and some of it will get cut. Oh, man, that was really – It's, but when you see the piece as a body, you go, okay. And I think the proof's in the pudding. So yeah. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, I love Andrew Lincoln that he, uh, he received that and availed that. That's hard because he had to go do what he had to go do to end this show. That was some – heavy lifting yeah. and then there's heavy lifting for all of us in every you know every corner that we we walk around there's a shadow we bump into that we have to deal with so uh bless all everyone and what was great is i had nowhere to put that anger except that little rag in my hand this little which you you'll start to see and guess what I'm wearing different clothes. I was going to yeah. compliment Anybody you. Anybody notice I'm no. I, I didn't notice. I'm right out of the book of Eli. <laughs> 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 um, so I feel like that's sort of, we're starting to see Axel sort of. Uh, and at the end, though, 
I'm there to make sure that gun in his hand goes down and this group is okay and whoa. And Carol's right there with me. So I feel like there's there's some bonds being formed, obviously. Now, Lou, I do want to touch on something that you mentioned, which is the shadows kind of looming over everybody. Mm, and that kind of brings us right to this other scene because we have Rick and we've seen this giant shadow looming over him. Now you have this shadow. And as we were talking about earlier, we have Glenn who now has this giant shadow over yeah. him, more so about what happened to Maggie than himself. And we have this scene with Herschel training Glenn and Maggie kind of comes in to check it out and just walks away, and they don't really acknowledge anything, but you can just see in Glenn's eyes this, this darkness and this mm -hmm. hatred that we saw in Rick in previous mm -hmm. episodes, and now it's infested him, where he has this same darkness and the same sort of disease, mm -hmm. Yeah, almost. Yeah, these are huge issues which are so great, and this is why, this is why tomorrow Monday at the water cooler this is discussed, because we're really talking about... Uh, um, the human experience, right? I mean, Carl talked about the shadow. I was mean to her. You know, um, uh, uh, Merle and Daryl's shadows. Everyone's got the weight of, of, of something that they carry, and the idea or the effort of survival doesn't erase those things, doesn't erase the morality of what you're what you're dealing with it doesn't erase the emotion mm -hmm. and that's the human experience and that's why i think the show's so good mm -hmm. and, and something that we do see to kind of bring it full circle in, in a way is that we see herschel's character who already went through that moment in season two mm -hmm. and now he's kind of that healer in a sense i'm mean, not only just as a doctor yeah. but he's also mentally he yeah, goes in he's kind of emotionally with maggie trying to heal her he's the one kind of taking care of Michonne as well and trying to keep Rick back as Rick's glaring at her. Mm -hmm. He's becoming the moral compass. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. he's definitely. A, we which, need that. Which, we don't, the, the whole group needs it, yeah, right? But that does concern me because anytime someone seems to take on that role of moral compass, that means their time mm -hmm. is pretty limited. He's the new AKA Dale. Dale. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Dale and even T-Dog, his last moments, yeah, you're right. too. Oh. But I love the part where Herschel had that moment with Glenn where he told him that he was like his, he considered oh, yeah. him his son. And I was like, man, that, I mean, those were some heavy words. Mm -hmm. I, I love that scene. Yeah, I agree. And, and especially to Maggie, to kind of bring up her mother. Yeah. And he just seems to know what, what to say yeah. right now and, and at this time. Yeah, there's some incredible issues. The Maggie Glenn thing. I mean, that's, that was, that's, that's great. We could do a whole show on that. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, they're still why really not? cute, though, when they're arguing. Like, I mean, so you're still rooting for them. Yeah. yeah. You know, to, to that's because they work. have the same haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let, let's talk about this new group that we have, Tyrese's group. And I know um, Arnie on the chat kind of mentioned he's so excited to see Tyrese because Tyrese has been in the comics before. Yeah. And we're mm -hmm. finally seeing him um, in the show and get some get some limelight and actually hear because I didn't know if he was actually going to show up. I thought Oscar kind of replaced him, and then we had some sadness there. But we, we've got Axel doing some cooking. And uh, we didn't know you were such a good chef, but I guess I'll being in there you, so long. Top ramen has nothing oh, on me. <laughs> well, you know, they're stuck in that cafeteria for how many months? I know, you got to right? learn to cook. I guess who cooked? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Tomas got uh -huh. upset with my cooking. Uh, Oscar was there to stand up. Yeah, we got oh, some noodles. That's yeah. where the bonds came from. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've got Herschel again being that healer and healing for the wounds of Tyrese's group. So we've got kind of Tyrese's group in this predicament here where they're, they're trying to be nice and they're trying to help out, but nobody's really trusting here. Mm -hmm. And I like Tyrese's kind of mention, just because it's kind of a funny nod to a lot of the crazy people we think of today about this Jerry guy yeah. who <laughs> was the survivalist nut. <laughs> and it turns out he was right. He's got his own show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there, yeah. And there's also, but there are people and there's reality shows about people like this. Mm -hmm. And it's just funny to think, like, what if they were right? Mm -hmm. This was an example. They were right. Turns out Jerry wasn't nuts at all. He, he got, he saved a bunch of lives mm -hmm. until he lost For a while. Own. For a while. Because yeah. they still ran out of food still, yeah. and had to still go yeah. out there. So, yeah. uh, they, I think that's so interesting. Um, how Tyrese's group comes in very genuine yeah. and very earnest, mm -hmm. and yet right away there's there, there's a, a distrust. And Tyrese brings that up and mentions it. The, he talks about the mistrust of humans in general. Mm. And Tyrese um, 
he, I mean, it's kind of funny too. Then there's the funny moment where Tyrese says that he's the first brother in history to break into prison. Break you into have a great prison. line yourself. Yeah, yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 writers. Yeah, let's let's give the writers credit. That's you know, we gotta have a little levity. This stuff gets so heavy. Actually, yeah. gotta yeah. drop. A I, I feel like a lot of times you do end up being that I comedic break for that. us. Yeah, I feel like that's important in that it. it it informs us, you know, there's two ways to go. You can laugh or cry, and uh, I would like to hope I'm bringing a, a smile to someone's face now and or again. Um, you know, Tyrese, uh, he, again, just wants to fit in. Just this is this is good. I'll help out. Well, you know, we got our group here. And then, wow, Alan, Ben, guys. Yeah, um, and let's talk about that scene, too. Well, there's so many things, and I talk a lot about it, and I'm not <laughs> going to get into socioeconomics here on your <laughs> show, but uh, who are the guys that that decide to Iago the group? Mm -hmm. Those two, yeah. Alan and Ben. Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, so I, I, I feel like, you know, because they're entitled. So, um mm. But without Tyrese, no offense, I think Carol and Carl could have taken Alan and Ben. Is that really the kind of thing they No, about? definitely. I <laughs> think so. Well, I Carl, mean, like, Carl alone. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Carl does a great show. Carl alone. He is a crack shot. Yeah. Like, I watched that last episode before the break again, and it's just like, bam. And he just turns yeah. around, wah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, they, I don't think they knew what they were getting into when even having that thought yeah, in their man. heads. As a guy that had to shoot his own mother, exactly. I don't. he has no fear right, right. now. I, I definitely agree. I think Carl just would have had taken care of yeah. immediately. <laughs> yeah. Well, when he says, you know, it's just a woman and a kid, you know, he's thinking a kid like from the old days. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 What, how many 10-year-olds do that? Yeah, and they've, you know, they have no idea what the survival group's been through and how they can take care of themselves. Um, I wanted to in, just – for fun again see how long i could stand there you sure everything's all right <laughs> <laughs> you know you sure you don't need help bearing them you can do it all right really something going on <laughs> yeah. and it was great but, to have suspense to that too, by doing that tyrese was so great he's like dude you got to get out of here I'm, I'm gonna i can't hold this much longer but when that. your character comes in it's yeah. funny right afterwards because you're being so nice yeah. and, and friendly with mm -hmm. them him and Sasha immediately give Ben and Alan the most dirty look. Yeah, yeah they did. Hopefully, yeah. you people. Yeah. So, uh, so then, how, doesn't it make you wonder how do the four of them, if it was just left, how would the four of them survive? Well, yeah, his, his wife just right. right. Donna was his wife, right. so I think there's a lot of anger there, and they just anybody who gets in the way of that, I think that's. Yeah. I just think they're mad and they want to take it out on somebody and well, they're not thinking about reason. And Tyrese, although he's probably lost people, it wasn't within that day time span. Yeah. Again, yeah. it's so interesting. I but keep harkening on big issues, but we go from a group of prisoners of five, how did we survive, to um, these subgroups. Now you have this subgroup that's shown up. How are they expected to survive or simulate? Yeah. You know, and how then did Woodbury put to get together? Mm -hmm. And we really see in societies. It's not easy. How do we do it? How are you know? How are we driving around and not running into each other? Well, I think the other thing that that scene serves too, be, be, besides that, all of that, is also just by reminding people about the the whole girl and a kid, you know, woman and a kid, how vulnerable the prison still is. I mean, no matter how great a crack shot Carl is, you know, they still yeah. lost. You know, they don't even know it at that time, I believe, but they still lost Daryl and they, they might lose Michonne. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so it's just a reminder to the audience that. This is still a vulnerable group for the most part, and even the ranks within, the people that are right now within that, that are trying to, to be and, part of the group. And with a child, I mean, an infant, let's not, a, a baby. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a gentleman that's, um, that has a handicap sticker. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're <laughs> right. Let's yeah. Just kid not kid ourselves. Yeah. You know, I can park where he wants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so they're a little vulnerable as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's um let's jump into the final scene of the episode then, where Rick finally confronts the group, and goes a little crazy. He yeah. starts seeing a shadow up there, and man, what a way to end the episode! Yeah. I was waiting to see when that was going to happen. I mean, we saw obviously saw it like you know before the end of the year l last year, and we were seeing that he was starting to lose it, and I was waiting to see how long it would take for him to actually lose it in front of the group. Yeah. So I didn't even think it was going to be revealed this quickly. I thought it was going to kind of linger on a little bit longer. Because before it was only Herschel who really knew. It was only Herschel, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And did we feel like, I really felt when he was dealing with Daryl that he was back, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did we, didn't yeah. we feel yeah. like that? Like, okay. Until the baby was crying and yeah. that whole thing started. Yeah. That's what kind of triggered it. I think anything that's reminding him of Lori is definitely a trigger point. And then I want to wonder, was that actually the actress who played Lori there or did they have a stand in? I, I don't know. She important? looked pretty creepy. Uh, though. I was just curious. Mm, am I supposed to say? Is there? I guess in my, uh, my speculation, you can have yours. <laughs> and it's a great oh. secret. Right? Oh my god! Because you can't see her face. You can't see her face. I would say it's just a silhouette. I would it? say if it really was Sarah Wayne Callies, then, then she's going to have a bigger role to play, where you will see her. But if it's just Ooh. just to show her for that one episode, mm-hmm. probably a budgetary concern, so they probably would have a lookalike. Yeah, so gotcha. That would be that yeah. would be the difference. I there was think. this guy Shane, right? Uh, Oscar Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane. Yeah. Yeah. That's true too. Yeah, he showed up. He right? did show up. Did so show up. Oh, wow, he did show up. That's yeah. a good clue. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and that's an important hmm. thing that you brought up though, Kristen. That moment with the baby, where the baby just kept on crying in Rick's arm, which is another thing. Which is, I think it's kind of like maybe the baby sensing the darkness that's still within Rick. Yeah. Maybe that's kind of what that's Ooh. an illusion. That's to. what I felt wow. at that moment. I mean, I thought that that's what, what kind of because you saw Rick's reaction from the baby crying and it just kind of took it to a different place. I felt that it was some type of connection with that where they were trying to and reflect that part. We don't know who the baby's father is, so maybe the baby doesn't we do feel not know a the connection baby daddy. with Rick. We do not know the baby daddy. Well, you're right. But we've oh seen uh, and another another player, Stan, Emily, Emily then, um, uh, Beth, pardon me, is uh, very, also very motherly. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, really the tenderness that this child is getting is, is getting from from Beth, and that, that brings up a, a great point too about all the children growing up too fast because you got Beth now already pretty much a mother in the mm-hmm. way she's acting. You have Carl acting like an adult and making all yeah. the leadership decisions. Um, I want to bring up real quick before we move on that uh, Pat on the chat mentioned that they think Tyrese might be able to replace Daryl for the short, short term, and he, Pat likes Daryl's or uh, Tyrese's character so far. Mm-hmm. Don't want to spoil anything from the comics about Tyrese, but yeah. that's just mm-hmm. in it. You know what? And, and let's say we never had. Uh, a comic, but don't tell Mr. Kirkman I said that. <laughs> um, let's go the other way. Let's go big or go home. Well, things are already say, so different. T- let's say Tyrese is the man. Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And who would he replace? He almost replaced it, which replaced Shane in a way. I think. Go big. He's replace saying Rick. Rick. I would think he oh, replaced I Rick. I see what you're you. saying. Even bigger. I mean, yeah. look, look at the calm. Look how calm he is. Look at look at how he's been able to handle every si- single situation. Right now, mm-hmm. with everyone else losing control, what they need is somebody with a with a firm head on their. Yeah, head. but that's how Rick started off. Yeah. So yeah. who and, knows? And he what? became leader. He be, was an outsider who automatically took the leader role by having that cool head. And now Tyrese is showing that, even yeah. though even though he's technically a prisoner in the prison. It's very King Lear. It's a great yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah, and so uh, so Tyrese has shown up, and um, wow, there's there's obviously some some as you said uh, some clear thinking and and focus, and yet it doesn't land, and you got you got to go because. Because the boss is crazy? Yeah. yeah. Whoa, you've got to go. Well, I want Herschel to step up a little bit more. I mean, it, it, it's obvious he, he treats Rick as family, just like he treats Len as family, like he said. But And he's giving Rick all this power to decide whether or not Tyrese goes. I mean, he tries to sway him toward the end. But yeah. I, mm-hmm. I kind of, even, even before when he locked them in and he's like, well, someone else has to decide. I really want him to at least say, but I'm going to put in a good word for you. I'm going to really fight for you. And one last thing on that scene. Keep in mind, you... The audience, the, the the fourth wall cast, um, in this room are the only ones who saw what Rick saw. Yeah. No one yeah. else in that That's room true. saw. Yeah. So when we get out, no, 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 leave, get out. I can't help you. That's really to Tyrese from our place. Yeah. Um, and his group. Wow. Okay. I think they got the message. Uh, that was pretty big, but yeah, if you're gonna be big baby and and make it that emphatic, you you guys have to leave. Y'all gotta go. You don't gotta go home. You got no home, but you gotta get the heck out of here. But then, well, it seems like everybody's supporting uh, Tyrese's group because they kind of escort him out, not yeah. to kick yeah. him out, but to help him because they know Rick is just losing it. Well, because yeah. Glenn left with them, he wasn't in their room there, right? At, at the whoops, fumble. Yeah, there's, double fumble. There's a mug. <laughs> But the mug stayed intact. The mug is not breakable. You'll have to good quality. Well <laughs> worth your nineteen ninety nine. AfterBuzzTV.com. But in that scene where Rick was actually losing it, didn't you guys kind of notice that 
he was talking up to something like he wasn't really facing necessarily Tyrese at that moment it seemed like he was if I the way it was looking like to me is that he was actually focused on something in the room where clearly he was yeah. mm -hmm. were we you're, they're looking at but the gun. You, he's but wouldn't you notice him? He's yelling and he and he's doing that. For, for all practical purposes, he's insane to them. So yeah. he's scaring the hell out of everybody. So yeah, I, I agree. Clearly, with you. I agree with you, Daryl. I didn't notice that, but I do think that it was just that since he was waving a gun around, okay. we don't yeah. know this guy. Yeah. This is the first time we've ever seen this guy. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just how he. That's acts. how he is. Yeah. 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 So uh, great, great notice though. Guess he was looking up the whole yeah. time. Clearly yeah. was. That's a good point. And just just from the inside perspective, we did not. Yeah. We did not notice. Okay. But let's Lori up there, um, did, we did notice that Rick was a little aggressive. Yeah, I did mm -hmm. like the acting on uh, Rick's behalf, though, when he is talking to Herschel. And he's like keeping a straight face with Herschel, but he's like, it's like keeping it, trying to keep it from keep it being from noticeable yeah. that he's looking yeah. straight up. So out. delightful. And one more little inside is that uh, uh, Andrew Lincoln is amazing, and the, the production has so much faith in him. Uh, he did that so many ways. We did that flip out so many interesting ways that's the take they chose which is the best one clearly because it's it's there but there were some other interesting odd good choices and uh um uh, those 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 things uh, what I love about Andrew Lincoln is he comes to work every day with a plan but he can move from that plan really great he's like mm -hmm. a great quarterback mm -hmm. you know he's not stuck in the option yeah he can, he he can, can he can Change roll out, out. yeah. yeah. And, and we do always wonder as an audience what those are, and we are, are, are always curious what takes they don't use. And let's kind of talk about that and talk with you, Lou, about all what it's like to be behind the scenes as you are our special guest today. We'd uh, love yay. to This is like being you. behind the scenes here talking about the show. It's so interesting um, because you have a great perspective. It's, it's exactly what I talk about all the time is that um, the the – the audience informs the show sort of um, r uh, rather uh, uh, sy symbiotically there's this osmosis that goes between the audience and production and I think they inform what they needed what they need to see what they need to be told where where they need to go as the production informs the audience about where the show's going and then mr. Kirkman's right in the middle um, so it, uh, that's great. When I came on to the show, I watched the show, and, and I enjoyed the show like everyone else, but I was immediately impressed with the work ethic mm -hmm. of the show. And you'll, uh, you'll hear this um, all the time, but in this case, it is absolutely true. This is the hardest working group of people, uh, from producers mm -hmm. uh, to writers to directors to the cast to the crew to the edit – to the music, to uh, the AMC, it, it really they grind. My first day on on this show was to watch a man get his leg chopped off. Wow. <laughs> now that show had been shot. That scene had been shot five days previous. In this episode, we showed up for the very the the butt end of the episode of as the survivors. We our reveal. And the cast came in and did that scene for us as a group on their off day, wow. which was amazing to me. And that was their invitation. That was their work ethic. This is the intensity of this scene. They redid that for us to watch. Wow. And so we knew where we were coming coming to mm -hmm. in that in that moment. So um, that was my very first uh, experience with, with that group. Um, uh, the bar is raised so high every day because of the nature of the show. You show up as if this might be your last week. Uh, <laughs> that is eminent uh, hanging. That's one of those shadows that you talk about <laughs> that hangs over there. Um, everybody feels like they cannot rest on their laurels. Um, uh, he who heads that up, obviously, is is uh, Glenn but another guy, uh, Glenn, Glenn Mazzara, another guy is Greg Nic Nicotero, no, who great. is absolutely <coughs> tireless in his work ethic, not just as a, as a, as a producer and now as a director, uh, but clearly with the special effects mm -hmm. and the makeup and the walkers and getting them right and, and getting the stunts right. And, and man, and so that shows up every day. They're 
their work ethic precedes them, not their reputation of great numbers and great audience viewership. It's, it's uh, we have to do better than we did last week. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the approach and it, it works. It's really great. It's really a wonderful, wonderful, humbling, humbling experience. And then to be part of that, it's great. S so Lou, um, from the chat, we've got a question for Yay. you. Yay, more which, questions, um, please. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, you were mentioning that kind of the work ethic and how great it was your first day on the, the show. But what Pat from the chat is wondering is what sort – and you, you mentioned you watched the show beforehand. Yeah, yeah. What sort of feelings did you have when you auditioned for The Walking Dead? Oh, it's so interesting. Did, did – uh, you know, Vincent might have talked a little bit about this. Uh, <laughs> this show is so popular. Y you, your show is so popular, audience, that uh, it has to be kept – quiet and secret and so when I was approached uh, to audition for this show and I was uh, the material that was given to me was um, was faux it wasn't real it's stuff that Here will never be, it was stuff that will never be seen mm -hmm. and uh, my audition piece was a conversation with T dog about his mustache <laughs> and how do, you, how do you groom your mustache so well, T-Dog? I just can't get mine to turn up. And this crazy conversation that then became tense with race, and then it became tense with affection, and then it became – and it was this crazy scene. It's funny you mentioned that because Haley Reinhart earlier on the chat had a hashtag that they wanted to use, which is Axel Stash. Yes. <laughs> so funny you would mention Interestingly, that. Interestingly, Axel Stash has a Twitter page, uh, <laughs> and I think has more followers than than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's at, at Axel Stash, or maybe Axel Sarah Faulkner does that. She's great, um, and so that was so. So we showed up. The the prisoners showed up. We we were cast, and. Um, uh, we were brought in, we filmed the show in Atlanta, and all these names were on trailers that I had never seen. And they were not the names on the call sheets. For you go to work, you get a call sheet yeah. of mm -hmm. these were not who I'd seen. And I said, I've been duped. They're doing, I heard about Nicotero doing these webisodes. I'm doing a webisode. I'm not doing the show. It's <laughs> this, it, because, because where's Andrew Lincoln? His name's not on here. And Norman Reedus, he's not, he doesn't work here. And, and all these names on the trailer, this isn't the show The Walking Dead. This is, the, the, this is some other show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm bummed, man. And uh, all right, okay. Hey, it's the check clears. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> there's Norman Reedus. I'm like, hey, when do you guys? He goes, dude, you're on the show. It's, it's, we keep it under wraps. So oh, wow. then, wow. then the material that you have is not what you're doing. So yeah. all of a sudden, a director and a producer comes in and goes, okay, here's the script. you got an hour to learn it. We're wow. sh shooting your first shot. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what, what? Yeah, um, we know that we had you kidnapping Beth and running into the woods as a savior, <laughs> and your whole arc was on the road, and um, yeah, that's, that's not who you are. <laughs> What? Really? I'm not a serial killer? Okay, well, what, what am I doing? And what then when I? you audition, they don't really give you they a don't name, give right? You, you don't know who you're yeah, going Yeah, you don't know to, that, that and you don't know what you're doing. So all of a sudden, it's like, okay, here's the, you know, the black folder gets undone, and there's the golden ticket with your name on it. Whoa, they break the seal, and you read, oh, wow, look, I, oh, I got to do that. Okay, so that's what this is. I'm, I'm good with that, but and I'm going to need 10 more minutes for those Forty new pages. Okay, <laughs> just how, ten. How big a shift is that if you're going from a scene where you Huge. think you're a totally different type of character? Well, so much so that it affects your wardrobe, it affects your your hair and makeup, uh, and it, it it just changes. But it also there there's a, there's a certain enlightening uh, piece to it because it knocks you so off balance that you can't help but put your skates on and skate yeah mm -hmm. and sometimes that's very liberating mm. to not be so in control i have a I have a firm belief that if you um if you rely on the wisdom of the unknown you will be 
not only surprised but delighted. And so this is this is one of the things that happens, and I think they're very good at that. And finally, the the producer and the director makes their way into your trailer, and you're introduced into the show, and it's a it's a it's a you know you're you're brought in by fire, and so it it's great. It's great. Um, <laughs> You know, everybody was looking at each other going, man, did they talk? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I'm not a homosexual prisoner now. I'm happy <laughs> happy about that. <laughs> I feel so better. I feel better about myself. Yeah, so yeah. The real you didn't have to be a serial killer. Nah, yeah. yeah. So the real question, does Silent Night, Silent Night, Zombie Night prepare you to fight the zombies in Walking Dead? Uh, yes, because um, I think, the Silent Night Zombie Night is so interesting, and I, I love that role because uh, because you that would be the place you would turn. What's what's the point? Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's that's why I did it because that felt real to me, and that felt like something um, that I would that I would do. And we've seen a lot of that on this show. You know, we've seen we've seen sacrifice and mercy killings, and the, and the you know. Um, yeah, I think that it prepared me in in the form of dealing with uh, with the idea, but it didn't prepare me for, for it prepared me for um, the moral issues, which yeah. is really what I adore about The Walking Dead. The zombies, the walkers, are they not a metaphor for our interest rates? Are they not a metaphor <laughs> for a parent who's struggling with health, cancer? Uh, are are the walkers not a metaphor for the one percenters are they not our mortgage notes are they not mm. our gas prices are they we not in this country and all countries trying to survive every day yeah. don't don't we live in a in a certain apocalypse as it is in civil unrest where we question our moral values and what are the lines drawn and or erased every day and so i, I, I that's what i love about the show and that's what that's what those people that spend six hours in and out of makeup every day represent to me um, is the big issues. And I think that's also what, what shows up at the water cooler on Monday are, yeah. the, are the huge issues. I yeah. know you mentioned you watched The Walking Dead before you were cast on the yeah. show, yeah. but you also have had a nice— You know, I went in originally—pardon me. I oh, went in good. originally for the pilot. Um, I think I went in for Merle, and then— yeah, I did. But then they were looking hard. They decided um, Merle needed a brother, but but they didn't have Daryl. Oh. They didn't have anything written for Daryl, so they, <laughs> they kept bringing us in doing Merle stuff. And so they would say, uh, "Well, this is M Merle's brother, though." <laughs> but it, but 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 it's it's Merle's material. We don't have anything for for this brother. Um, so it was hard because you'd have, I'd be like, "Well, this is the same scene I did for Merle." <laughs> But you want me to do it as if I was his brother, right? Uh, okay. What's his brother like? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> well, then I'm gonna do it like Merle. No, 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 no. He d it's not a twin brother. It's it's just. A <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So anyway, then I heard um, Norman. They they thankfully got Norman. Wow. And uh, the rest is history. We all. So you had a giant wrap around then. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> but um, we do need to move on, and Sorry. I, I do want to mention that um, Lou, Lou, we can find you this Tuesday on FX for Justified. Another great show, right? Yeah. This show is so popular as well. Justified uh, FX. I have a nice little guest star spot on that with um, dear friends um, Walton Goggins, who's one of my dearest friends, uh, and Timothy Oliphant, who uh, I know from Rango. Um, Walton's so interesting because when I first got cast by Rob Zombie in The Devil's Rejects, I was a little trepidatious. <laughs> I was a good boy raised in the South, good Christian boy. What's this devil worshiper going to do? I <laughs> called Walton, and he said, man, do yourself a favor. Work with Rob Zombie. You'll be best friends. A friend for life, and he was never so right. So I'm always thankful and for Walton and happy for all his lovely success. That's a great show. Uh, also, I may mention that this week there's a film. Yeah, Saving Lincoln. Saving Lincoln is and isn't Lincoln popular these days? <laughs> Quite popular. I think ours will be very interesting. Uh, it's 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 a, a, a lovely film technique done with still photography, moving pictures on still photography. And um, Tom Mendez is our Lincoln, and I think he's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I play Montgomery Ball, uh, Blair, who's the first Postmaster General, and also um, 
uh, a likening to the Kennedy family, a very powerful family, the Blairs back in those days. So if you get a chance, throw into that. I think the Lincoln thing is important. Again, we are in civil unrest in that's this true. country, and I think that's why uh, our interest in Lincoln is so high. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get to some predictions then. Oh, are you looking oh, at me? I'm right something. at you, Kristen. Oh, um, I think, oh my goodness. Well, when I, um, I got to do interviews on the uh, premiere red carpet, and I'm waiting to see, I think next episode, um, Gail Ann Hurd said, obviously, I mean, it's Walking Dead, that we're going to see one of our beloved characters, you know, fight it. Basically, I'm walking so, dead. I know, right? Oh, no. Never Come happens. Stop. Um, I don't want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm waiting to see if that's going to be set up. Like how, how long that way? And um, I, I also want to see Michonne with uh, Tyrese. If anybody else reads the comic, yeah, I'm curious about that. Hmm, my prediction. Uh, I'm going to predict that they have a new sidekick created for Axel on the show that will be uh, down yes. the line for this season. That's what I think. Axel needs a friend Axel besides his friend. mustache. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Give Carol. Me. Carol's interesting. <laughs> she's got the short hair. Got the yeah. short hair. We found out she's not a lesbian, yeah, so exactly. it's open. Big, Big news. Big news. There could be something. And by the way, Darryl's being gone. a lesbian, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it, I love them. It <laughs> opens the door. The uh, door is open now yeah. for you to walk through it. Either, any <laughs> port in a storm, I always say. Yep. <laughs> well, you took my prediction. My prediction was going to be Carol and Axel getting a little closer together. But hey, I, you know, I like that. I'm going to say uh, I, I predict another wardrobe change for uh, Axel. That is cool, too. <laughs> think, I'm uh, looking a little Chef Boyardee-ish, but I, I really like this new wardrobe. I, I do. I would imagine that after weeks and weeks of having the same wardrobe, it must be liberating in a way to change it. And so it great. It. i got to be honest with you. It was so great because you it be, not only is it nice to have a change, but you start feeling like you're human and not a prisoner, <laughs> not, a, not a convict. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm interested that if um, – when people wear that gear, do people judge them? Like, are we judged as convicts, even in that context, when we were wearing prison gear? It seems like you guys were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, Oscar, you come with me. You're, yeah. you're first through. Uh, oh, that didn't work. And uh, Axel, you, uh, if you stay here and guard the, the ladies. <laughs> Maybe hey, Rick, that's hey, that's not a bad Rick role. shouldn't be the leader. <laughs> You must be excited about that one. Yeah. Uh, so then I guess my prediction would be that I think um, down the line we're going to get, uh, as this war is brewing between Woodbury and the prisoners, I think we're going to have Merle and Daryl actually come back and take a side. I think they're going to end up taking the prison side at the exact moment and end up saving the day in some sort of regard. Mm -hmm. Maybe not fully, but I think in some sort of regard they will. And then in the previews we saw, they run into somebody on the on the street. So I'm curious, who do you guys think they're It could be from season into? one. Back <laughs> in the first episode. Ooh. How exciting would that be? That would be cool. That'd Can be I, a great comeback. Am I allowed to throw a prediction out there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, please do. All right. Um, well, since we saw the previews where we see uh, Glenn's going to go back to Woodbury, apparently with Michonne, mm -hmm. I could see something like Tyrese maybe goes with him or something that leads the two people who are trying to cause an uproar with Tyrese's group to try something and if we're going to see someone beloved die I'd say maybe Herschel dying for somebody in their group Ooh. yeah I agree I definitely think Aaron's going to end up screwing over that group big time or at least himself or something bad's going to happen Alan. Or Alan. Alan. Alan yeah thank Alan. you Alan. Alan I think Alan's going to end up screwing things over big time yeah um, Alan did anyone see Ben and um, uh, Beth hooking up and Carl getting upset <laughs> no oh. I'm predicting Andrea has some big decisions to make yeah. yeah, and Brother. I'm predicting that we listen to everything Lou has to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank <laughs> All right. you. Thank you, Lou. It's All been right, yeah. such a delight. Oh, it's awesome. All right, guys. Well, you can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K L E I N, or on my website djk-online.com. You can find uh, me at Nando Vell on Twitter. That's N A N D O V E L. You can find me at Dario Kristen, D E R R I A L C H R I S T O N, on Twitter and Facebook. You can find me on Twitter, Kristen Carroll13, or also website is www.thefan, F A N, 2 C T O S E E.
And you can find me at Lou Temple Actor. How original on Twitter. <laughs> Yay. But, yeah, come uh, shout out at me, and I'll shout back. I'd love to hear y'all. And definitely if you guys had questions we couldn't get to on the chat, definitely tweet at Lou. Yep. Yep. I will throw back an You answer. follow him? You follow me? Okay. You follow, follow me? him on Twitter. Please follow <laughs> me. Axel would love it. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. From Bing.com.